Hello and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. Today is going to be my last sort of vlog style video, but we'll do something slightly different as well. So if you have been following along, um, welcome back. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have been having a couple of days off over the long Easter weekend. And I've been crafting a lot and sharing what I've been doing in like a vlog sort of style. Um, and yeah, I've been enjoying it for sure. Today is my last official day off. I have my son tomorrow though, but I think this will be the last episode of this kind for now. So I'm going to chat to you about what I am crafting, what I finished. And I also, just to keep it interesting, I have brought out a couple of my favorite sweaters. Um, some of them I hadn't even talked about on the podcast because I wasn't podcasting at the time. So I had have brought out a couple to sort of chat to you about how they've worn, how I like them, what I like about the yarn, what maybe hasn't been so perfect. So I'll do that in a second because I know in the past, a couple of years ago, I used to do these kinds of videos and I think a lot of people really enjoyed seeing how things wear and get used after over time rather than just finishing something and then you never see it again. But first up, let me just show you, I have finished my socks. So I, I want to say I finished them last night. I finished them last night, but I did Kitchener the toes just now. So my Hedgehog Fibers socks are done. This is a three by one rib sock, which I always think looks really pretty and also is really handy in terms of just giving it that little bit more um, stretch. These fit a little bit better than just your plain vanilla socks. So I quite enjoy making them. Um, for the last time, Colorway is sitting pretty. I have two of them, they're done, and I am very happy about that. Also, I finished this spin. I couldn't help myself. I told you that I once I finish singles, I just need to apply them immediately. So I applied these last night um, and they're done. So this is about, I think, 270 meters. So it's like a DK to sport weight. Um, it's a two-ply. It's a mix of Merino, South American wool and Donegal naps, I believe. This is from Fiber from Spin Jones and I spun it sort of long draw to ply. So it's a really sort of squishy barber pole yarn. I think it's very, very fun. Um, this is a sort of, if you don't, if you know Zauberwall by Shoppe, they do an edition three, which comes in 50 gram balls. I don't think it's sock yarn. I have a couple of their balls in stash and I never dig into them because they feel so special. But this is sort of similar, um, so it's a sort of fluffy two-ply sporty DK, which again, I think that would actually work with the Edition 3. Um, I love spinning these yarns, and I always say I'm going to make hats, and now I have this, and I'm thinking I want to make another shawl with this, and pair it with a neutral, possibly a commercial spun yarn. Sort of similar to what I am doing with my Simon shawl. So I'm even thinking there is a Stephen West pattern, which I can't think of the name right now. I should have looked this up. But essentially it's a garter stitch with um, slip stitches and you make this like big triangular shawl. And I've made it before with hand spun paired with a, I think with a commercial yarn. So by striping this with a neutral, this would go a very long way. And then, you know, the colors can pop and shine even more. So I'm thinking I might do something, even either the Stephen West shawl or just another sort of striped shawl. I'm not sure what I would pair this with, maybe a charcoal, maybe a cream. But yeah, this may become a shawl. I haven't decided yet. It would also be extremely fun with color work. Yeah, but I really like it. I'm very happy with it. It's exactly how I wanted it to come out. Um, so this is done. So to talk a little bit about some older sweaters that I have made, let's start with the one that I get the most questions about, which is this. This is the Lovage by Mary Wallen, who designs beautiful, beautiful color work. Um, I'm sure most of you will have come across her at some point. Um, 
this was one of my dream knits. Um, I think this is one of her most popular patterns as well. The Love It is a very traditional color work um, sweater. The original yarn that she designed it with was already discontinued when I knit this, which was about maybe three years ago. So I spent a long time finding matching colors from Jameson of Shetland. So this is all Jameson's of Shetland yarn, which in their two ply jumper weight, which comes in 25 gram balls, I think. And look, I have worn this so, so, so much. And because it is very dense, um, I think the sweater is designed for something crazy like a 28 stitch gauge. I think mine was a little bit looser. I think this was, I knit mine on like more of a 26 stitch gauge, which still, for me, that's a very, very tight fabric. So the stitches are tiny, and that means that this has worn so, so well. I think this may be one of my most worn sweaters. I just keep wearing, like this has been through so many like rough like under like, coats and with a baby and a toddler and at the park like this has not gotten the easy treatment and it still looks pretty pristine i think if you look at it like this it's still perfect and i love this so much this is definitely my favorite sweater um the pattern is quite i mean it's not super advanced but it is an advanced pattern pattern and what i didn't like is when i bought it because there are so many colors, the charts are all symbols and I found it quite tedious to work from the symbols rather than I think most charts you buy at the moment, they'll be, you know, like either colored in or they'll be like black and white. But these charts were a little bit of, I mean, they weren't super annoying, but you had to focus and obviously there's a lot of charts. And what I did is, and this is a bottom up construction, but I didn't want to do that because I like to knit my sweaters top down. So I just reverse engineered the pattern. I also, I'm not sure, I think these short rows, I think I added them in. I don't think there were short rows in the pattern, but I could be wrong. But anyways, I literally just reverse engineered the pattern, which sounds more difficult than it was. Essentially, you start at the bottom of the pattern and figure out how many stitches um, do you have for the neckband and then for all the increase uh, decreases that you would do if you were knitting bottom up. You increase and yeah it worked out well this was a labor of love but actually once I sort of got over that mental block it was quite easy to do and then I did a couple of decreases in the body which you probably can't tell along the sides just because I knew that probably my stockinette will be slightly looser and more stretchy than the color work and this has just resulted in a really really good fit um, Yes, it is crinkled because it was in my wardrobe. But yeah, I love it. Um, this is, I'm not sure, I don't think I could knit pieces like this all the time, but I'm very proud of it. And I should mention, I basically just recreated the colors that the original used. The only modifications other than knitting it top down was I didn't do the crochet thing on the sleeves. And also I really love this sort of marled beige. So I think the original has a bit of a different tone neutral, but otherwise this is pretty close to the original and I am very happy with it. So there you go. That is the Lovage. Um, has worn ridiculously well. I love this garment. Um, next up, a much more recent finish is my, and I have fluff in my mouth, um, my Sunday Cardigan by Petite Knit. I told you I was going to add buttons and I didn't add buttons. I have just been wearing this as an open front cardigan. I finished it just before Christmas and I took it to Germany for Christmas with me. And yeah, I've worn it quite a bit. Um, this is knit out of Sandnes Garn Fritids Garn, which is a sort of chunky weight Norwegian wool. It is quite soft for what it is. It's not a soft yarn, but for being a 100% non-superwash Norwegian wool, it is quite soft. And you can tell it has been pilling, which is fine. I sort of expected that. It's not awful. I have worn this to the office. If I were to wear it to the office again, I probably would have to depill it. Um, it is very warm and I like the I like the shape. I didn't enjoy making this just because the dense yarn on large needles wasn't enjoyable to me. So I think I mentioned at the time that I would like to make this again, but with a drapier yarn combination. I'm thinking maybe 
mohair and sport weight, mohair and decay weight. I need to play with gauge, but I would like this in a drapier fabric. But this has been quite useful. But unlike the lovage, I don't think I'll still be wearing this in five years' time. I mean, I could. It could eventually also become a house coat again, but you can see it's just getting a bit fluffy. It is also getting more soft, though, which is nice. So maybe not my favorite, but I could see myself knitting this again. Don't know if I would knit with the yarn again. It's beautiful yarn. There's nothing wrong with it. I just personally didn't enjoy the thick yarn. Um... But yeah, there's not, I can't fault Santana's for this. There's nothing wrong with this. But yeah, this is how this one has worn in the last, and this is only like four months old. So yeah. Another old favorite that I don't wear all the time, but I wear when it's very cold is this. This is the Vanna cardigan, uh, Vanna pullover which was a pattern from Kit Couture, who is their Danish sort of kit and yarn company i think you can order their kits in the uk from beautiful knitters in london I'm not sure I, I know you used to but i got this kit my husband got me this kit for christmas 2020 so this was my christmas lockdown project with a newborn and this i did knit bottom up so i knit the sleeves first and it's all over color work as you can tell and this was also at a very tight gauge, so this took a long time. And the chart is a little bit annoying, I will be honest. Like, it's beautiful, it's very, obviously, geometric. But it's not the sort of chart that you could really, really quite memorize. But I love it. This is also knit out of 100%. Um, oh, you're, you're seeing the back where the increases don't line up. Let's look at the front. This looks much prettier. This is knit out of a 100% alpaca yarn. Their own yarn that sort of came with the kit again very very different to what i usually choose but i will say this has held up so well and you can see there's a bit of fluff all over it but i think it still looks really really good and i think you could wear that like people will think this is store bought um and again i've worn this quite a lot it still has the ends attached because i never weave in my ends um yeah, I'm quite happy with it. It's sort of a statement piece, so I don't wear it all the time, but I do wear it every year. Um, and again, I think it looks pretty perfect, pretty close to perfect. My gripe with the pattern was that in the pictures, the raglan lined up with the decreases in the pattern. And in reality, it only does with certain sizes, and that really annoyed me. Um, so what I've done is I've made sure that the front it aligns and then in the back it doesn't, which I don't love. It's not the end of the world, but I wasn't impressed at the time. But other than that, I do quite like it. There is no neck shaping, so it's got a bit of a funny neck fit. But overall, I think I'm quite happy with this and I think this is going to be around for a long time as well. And then the last sweater that I brought out to show you, because I've worn this to death. Um, this, I think this may be my first or second Anchors sweater, also by Petit Knit. So it's, you can't really see it. Can you see there's a ribbed sort of yoke, and then the rest is stuck in it. And this is very, this was shoved in the back of my closet. Apologies for that. And what I often do is I just tie a little bit of yarn on the inside. So I know where the back is. And this I have worn to death. This is J.C. Rennie yarn. J.C. Rennie is a, I think a Scottish uh, yarn mill. And they are one of the companies, supposedly the first one, who make this sort of super soft yarn, like similar to Holst and Woolinet and all of these companies. So it's a very light fingering and I buy it in cones um, because you get way more colours on cones. I think a cone is about, I think by now it's about £25. It was less when I purchased these cones. This is Colorway Smolder and I'm not sure if you can tell. But there are so many colours in that colourway. No, it doesn't want to do it despite me trying my best. Nope. But you can sort of see... There's like yellows and oranges and red flecks in the yarn. It is so beautiful. And I 
I have also used this yarn held double, but this is held single. And what happens, more so than with like whole super soft, I would say, is that you wash this and all the spinning oil comes out and it just fluffs up. And I know same thing happens with a lot of these yarns, but I love it the most with JC Rennie. I think JC Rennie is hands down my favorite yarn. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. It is so soft. It wears really well. And because it's, you know, it's knit just with one single strand. So it is a very light jumper, but because it fluffs up, it doesn't become see-through and it becomes very, very light to wear as well. Sorry, my phone ran out of storage. I was saying this is just such a light sweater, so it's really comfortable to wear. And like, I don't feel like I'm overheating and just holding it makes me want to wear it more. Um, in terms of, you know, wear and tear over time, you can tell maybe under the arms there's like a tiny bit of pilling, but overall, this still looks really, really good. And this has not been deep pilled so if I deep pill this, I think it's gonna be like new. It is basically, I think it looks really, really good already. So yeah, this is one of my favorite sweaters. This is also the reason why I keep making anchor sweaters because this one is just the most perfect one. It just fits so well. It's got the right amount of, you know, it's slightly oversized, but not too much so. And yeah, just holding this makes me want to buy more yarn from JC Rennie, even though I still have some in stash and make more anchors sweaters. Um, and I do have, I have a very light pink cone, which is slightly, I think it's one shade lighter than I wanted it. So there's a similar shade and I might need it at some point. And I have a beautiful sort of warm mustard yellow. And both of them I want to turn into anchors sweaters eventually. So there you go. There's some, those are some of my favorite garments and how they've worn. And I've waffled on for a really long time. So I'm going to get back to my knitting because Today's my last day off. My son is in nursery. I went to the hairdressers this morning, then had a lovely brunch with my husband. We just decided to make the most of it because who knows when the next chance will be for us to have a meal, just the two of us. Um, so I'm going to just do some knitting and yeah, I'll probably catch up with you very briefly later. Hi guys, I'm back. My husband is just getting my son from nursery, so I thought I'd quickly close out this vlog and show you what I've managed today, which hasn't been crazy amounts, but I have done a fair bit of my first sleeve of my linen quill jumper. So my plan is I'm almost finished, I think, with this color combo. And then I might try it on and possibly do the other sleeve to the same point and then decide on length later on. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, also, I need to check um, yarn amounts, all of that. But yeah, I'm making some progress with it and it's going quite quickly as I had expected. It's, it's an easy, fun knit. Um, so I've made some sleeve progress on this. And where is my mento? Yeah. I have also made Quite a bit of progress on the body of my lento by Joanna Hietala. Um, I'm showing you the back, this is the front, not that it matters. But as you can tell, I am dropping stitches, but this is where I split for the sleeves. And I reckon I've knit about half of that today. So that is quite a quick knit. And yeah, I was really clever initially because I tend to split splice my ends together with non-superwash yarns, just like this Knit Picks palette to minimize weaving in any ends. And of course, <laughs> did I fasten my new yarn onto the thread where I cast on rather than my actual project. But yeah, that's just me being silly. But anyways, um, nothing crazy to write home about, but I think this closes out my Easter weekend vlogs. I'm going to be back with a regular episode most likely next weekend. Essentially whenever I have actually made enough progress to warrant you showing you some things because I don't want to keep showing the same things over and over and over again. Um, so yeah, I have half of dinner already in the oven and I'm going to run now and enjoy the last couple of minutes of 
peace and quiet because there will be no more once my son gets home make our dinner and yeah pretty uneventful tomorrow it's sort of back to the regular parenting thing um and then back to work on thursday thank you so much if you followed through this series let me know about any knitting that you're doing and definitely let me know if you're still interested in more of the kind of videos on how sweaters have worn how are, how wool is behaving all of that um yeah so thanks again i hope wherever you are in the world that you are happy and healthy and safe and you have some lovely yarn to play with and i will talk to you very very soon thank you for watching happy knitting bye